I've always been a big fan of the Viktor Frankl quote, between stimulus and response there's a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. In my coaching, that has served as a visual to help clients understand that, for the most part, their reactions to things, verbal, physical, emotional, are frequently programmed and not the result of some well-thought-out logic. In my writings, I've referred to this as being in the knower-judger state. In effect, we judge what's happening against our learned understanding of how we know the world should work, and we know what to do because we've had a life of learning how to react. A universal challenge with this is that these knower judge reactions frequently don't serve our long-term aspirations well. And we don't see that. And we perpetuate some of the dysfunction that becomes an integral part of all our lives. I know that often when I disrespect that space between stimulus and response, usually with some quick verbal retort, it's a license for one of those palm to the forehead moments. Why'd I do that again? Sometimes I'm even present enough to apologize. Other times, I just hold my stubborn ground and prove to those around me how closed-minded I can actually be. Like the donuts and other carbohydrates I want to avoid, trying to adhere to a low-carb discipline. Sometimes, I simply don't understand what's going on. Boom! I did it again. And while that space between stimulus and response is critical for those instantaneous interactions we have with our families, work teams, business clients, etc., I've recently become aware of a slower, more deliberate environment in which that space can be quite long and, if not respected, can cause untold damage to my world. The news cycle. Headlines are the stimulus. Breaking news. Trump, whatever. What's your immediate response? Could be, I knew it, the buffoon. Or it could be, there he goes again, saving the good old US of A. I'm seeing a trend in headlines. They're almost never what they appear to represent. I don't care if you're a CNN fan or a Fox News advocate. Each end of the political spectrum has a vested interest in me not respecting that space between their provocative headline and my knee-jerk, knower judge reaction. It sells viewership, clicks, creates advertising dollars. I worked at training myself to hit the pause button for almost any headline that looks more like an opinion than a fact. For example, there's a huge difference between three taken into custody and carjacking, and three black youths jailed for teacher carjacking in West County Mall. One is pretty factual, the other quite leading. I have friends on Facebook who seem to share every far left or far right post they can get their hands on. And these are people I know and love. I've learned to separate their political Facebook posts from their social Facebook posts. I pay virtually no attention to the former. And while I will read headlines, I will no longer comment or judge on any of them. That's my space. Respecting that space helps me sleep better. It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.